next story comes from Singapore and the Urban Redevelopment Authority. Singapore is an island, a city, a country, located in Southeast Asia and with a land area of just over 700 square kilometers and a population of 5 million people. It's one of the most densely populated countries in the world. Singapore is about people, about community, about living and planning for future generations. It's a country rich in culture, enthusiasm, inspiration, pride. Planning for Singapore presents many unique challenges and requires careful planning for housing, transportation, commerce, and much more. Leading those challenges is the Urban Redevelopment Authority. So please welcome, from Singapore, Victor Chua and Eugene Lau. Their story is about using City Engine, not just to author 3D content, but to take us behind the scenes as they plan and design one of the most exciting cities in the world. Victor. Thank you, John. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Victor. With me is Eugene. We are from the Urban Redevelopment Authority of Singapore. Our mission is to make Singapore a great city to live, work, and play. Well, as the National Planning Authority of Singapore, URA plays many important roles. This includes long-term land use planning, development control, urban design to enhance the cityscape, conservation of built heritage, government land sales, as well as place management to create vibrancy in the city. URA has been leveraging on the use of GIS since the 80s, but we are constantly on the lookout for new ideas as well as innovation to meet our planning needs. So one idea that we have was how best to leverage on the latest 3D smart technology to transform the way we plan and design our future. So in our latest efforts, we use City Engine to develop localized planning rules as well as building templates to meet our needs. Today, Jurong Lake District is one of the most exciting development projects in Singapore. 20 minutes drive from town and well served by major expressways and our mass rapid transit, Jurong Lake District will be the biggest commercial hub outside the city centre. Urban planning is a very complicated as well as iterative process. It requires the ability to quickly simulate as well as to evaluate multiple scenarios conforming to the planning guidelines and planning intents of the land parcel in question. So this process will typically take days. With City Engine, we have translated the various complicated guidelines and intents into procedural rules, allowing our staff to quickly explore multiple scenarios, evaluate the metrics, as well as to perform spatial analytics to analyze future impacts. Next, we are going to show just how we could use City Engine to design and plan for a development site in Jurong. Eugene, please. Thanks, Victor. Hi, my name is Eugene, and I'm an architect from the Urban Redevelopment Authority under the Urban Planning and Design team. My role as an architect in the URA requires me to develop architectural simulations and draft urban design guidelines for land parcels, as well as to ensure that there's a high quality of architecture and urban excellence in both the public and the private realm. Now, planning and design is indeed extremely iterative, simply because we have to constantly build models, calculate planning quantums and requirements, as well as to generate artists' impressions and perspectives for our stakeholders and, of course, our bosses. Now, in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to show you how all this can easily be done as we incorporate geodesign into our planning and design process with the help of City Engine. With our building rule in City Engine, we can easily create 3D procedural models simply by applying the rule on 2D existing building footprints in Singapore. The building rule also applies textures automatically onto the buildings according to the different types of land users. Our building rule can also read raster and vector data, such as population density, and render it like a heat map and apply it to the buildings. Now, let's move on to the next rule that we like to call the parcel rule. And let's start working on this parcel over here, first by applying parcel.cga, which is the parcel rule, onto the parcel itself. This is a simple rule that subdivides the big parcel into smaller lots according to our planning requirements. 
Next, let's assign the land use zoning onto the parcel. Let's go with commercial use. Now, in Singapore, there are many requirements and guidelines that architects and developers have to, have to adhere to, like, for example, building height control, building setback requirements. What the parcel rule does is that it generates a 3D volume that you see here and takes all these factors into consideration and indicates the extent of what we can build on the parcel itself. Now, different land use zonings have different setback requirements. For example, a residential development will have a bigger setback requirement as compared to a commercial one, simply because houses have to be further away from the road in order to mitigate traffic and noise. You can also change the setback requirements manually simply by keying in the figures into the inspector panel on the right. All right, now let's have some fun and add some buildings onto the parcel. Based on parameters like the gross plot ratio, which is somewhat similar to the FAR over here, as well as the percentage of the lot coverage, the parcel rule will select suitable building typologies and distribute it across the entire parcel and these typologies are all from the Singapore building templates. And once the buildings have been assigned, you can even rotate the buildings on site to face a certain orientation. Now, in the case of Jurong Lake District, I would want to face my residential development towards the lake itself in order to maximize the view of the waterfront. You realize that as we change the size of the lots, the rule adapts itself on the fly and replaces the existing buildings with new building typologies that will fit the parcel even better than before. Now I want to increase the amount of ground greenery by reducing the lot coverage. So you notice that as we change this, the buildings on site will adapt and change in size and form to try and increase the greenery while retaining the same amount of cross floor area. Now last but not least, we can even vary the heights of the buildings with a variation tool to make it look more realistic than before. The parcel rule also allows us to keep track of the breakdown of the total gross floor area in the development according to the different types of land use. For example, now if we change this development into a mixed-use parcel, this is what we call a white site in Singapore, we can see that the bar graph appears on top of the models showing the breakdown of the different kinds of land use, such as 20% commercial, 20% hotel, so on and so forth. Now, with this breakdown of the gross floor area, we can generate very useful information in the report, like, for example, a total number of dwelling units, to total car parking demand, and even electrical consumption can all be included in the report itself. All right. Let's try and zoom out a little bit and apply this parcel rule on all the vacant lots and parcels in Jurong Lake District. By doing so, we can generate a very quick look and feel of how the entire district will eventually look like when it is fully developed, something even I don't know. And there you have it. Now, next. Now that we're done... Oh, thank you. All right, now that we've done, we're done with using the parcel rule to generate a conceptual massing design on this parcel, let's move on to something else we call urban design. In Singapore, urban design is incorporated into land use planning. The URA drafts urban design guidelines and impose it onto key growth areas, like, for example, Jurong Lake Districts. And some of the urban design aspects that we should consider for this specific site include safeguarding of views from the train station to, key, to landmarks like the pagoda here. And this view shows an unobstructed view of a pedestrian standing at the station and looking at the lake and the landmark. And next, we'll see the yellow objects on screen, which represents three different views of Jurong Lake that we are trying to preserve and retain and ensure that no buildings are built within these view corridors. We have already pre-generated some conceptual buildings to, to avoid these three view cones that we have here. And in, in order to maximize the view of the residents who are going to stay around the lake in the future, we have also imposed a 30-degree height control mechanism, which is this white plane that you see over here, to ensure that the buildings will actually step down towards the lake. Now, it seems like the towers in the background are facing a bit of problem as it's exceeding the 30-degree height control. Now, there's no, type, no, no issue for worries because we can simply adjust the height of the buildings with the slider tool itself. 
Moving on, here I have a building template that includes buildings that were previously used in the parcel rule. In order to have better control of the placement of the buildings, we can select the building manually and cite it onto the terrain and avoid the yellow view corridors. Now let's flip around to have a better view of what we're trying to do over here. With the 30 degree plane, the building template actually gets its height from this 30 degree angle that you see in white. So as I move the building further back, the height increases automatically by itself, but does not exceed the height control limit. So the same thing happens when you move it nearer to the water, magic happens, to ensure that it steps down towards the waterfront to retain the scale, the sensitive scale that relates to the greenery as well as to the water body. Now, one of the key policies that we have in Singapore is the landscape replacement policy, whereby developments are required to ensure that the amount of greenery that's lost on ground due to development will be replaced vertically within the building itself and this results in sky terraces and roof gardens that you so often see in Singapore. This rule allows us to generate green roofs on buildings simply by selecting the buildings as well as the type of vegetation that you would like to have on the roof of the buildings. All right, let's zoom out to have a better view of the design that we've created in a span of less than five short minutes. Next. We have a view from the Pagoda to the MRT station, that's also the train station, by the way, which is one of the, the view corridors that we have tried to safeguard and retain. You realize that the building step back and increases in height as you go further away from the waterfront as a result of the 30-degree height control mechanism. So through procedural technology, we have successfully created one possible option to meet the planning requirements. This conceptual design gives us a quick gauge of what the development could eventually look like in the end. However, it's a great start for architects to further fine-tune the proposal and incorporate more detailed design elements into the project itself. Now that we've created this specific urban design, you remember earlier that we've also created the district-wide simulation of Jurong Lake District using the parcel rule? We can even take this proposed model out of City Engine and run a quick traffic gravity analysis using GIS and CityLab's Cube technology. Now, what's interesting to see is the change in the traffic flow and how it's affected by the proposed developments. It looks like we're just adding traffic to this one area, but if we turn on the delta, we can see the amount of traffic that we're adding to specific different areas and how it's affected. Now, as promised, in a span of 10 short minutes, we've managed to, set, we've managed to achieve what we have set out to do which is to meet the planning requirements, incorporate urban design in the conceptual simulations, and run a simple analysis of the proposed plans, making geo design a part of our planning workflow to make Singapore a better place to live, work, and play. Thank you. Thank you, Victor and Eugene. I mean, when we look at your work, your excitement, your enthusiasm, I mean, what I see, what I think all of you see, is this new age of geodesigners, of planners, of architects that can truly design a better world and a new future. Now, before we say goodbye, we want to especially thank Eugene for taking time out of his busy schedule, because you will see he needs to get home to Singapore on Friday, because he has to get home in time for his wedding. So please join me in congratulating And as our wedding present for Eugene and his fiance Samantha, <laughs> matching Map Man and Map Girl t-shirts. Thank you. Thank you Have John. a wonderful wedding. Thanks, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. We've never done that one before, have we? What we've just seen from Singapore is really a great example of how to design our future. Once those designs are completed or even partially underway, they can become significantly more valuable by publishing and sharing these with others.